kind of nervous. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm a bit nervous, um, kind of scared because I'm holding something that is a piece of memory. And I don't know if I'm going to get to hear what's on this tape. I don't know if the tape works. I don't know if it's, if the machine I bought to play it actually can play the music. We'll see. But tell me, let me, um, let me tell you a little story about this tape. When I was 18 years old, I wanted to be a musician. wanted to write music and record music and I wanted to play in rock bands and tour the world. Like in life, things change. I never really thought how much work would go into it, um, which is probably one of the reasons why I'm not a musician now, but that's another story. But being a musician was my dream. There's a formula or, or something people someone's put together or and they said you know there's a certain amount of hours that you need to do, do something before it becomes um, you know kind of perfection if you like um, it's like 40,000 hours or something I can't quite remember um, but it feels like I've spent that long <laughs> this is my friend Kevin Kevin Dixon and his life is music he lives and breathes music, and he has toured and performed for many years. And he's doing something that takes a lot of courage, and not a lot of people have found success in the way that he has when he performs in his current band, which is a tribute. And even though Pearl Jam UK is a tribute, I highly respect him and his work ethics of taking on the Eddie Vedder persona, which he does to his full ability. This work ethic and experience blended with passion for music is something I have always looked up to with any musician. I first started singing, I think I was about four or five years old. And um, there was a pub actually not too far from where we are now here. Um, a little a local pub called The Coronation. And every Saturday I used to go over with my dad and my mom and my nan and my granddad. And they had a small little stage and they had a microphone going into little speakers and they had a, a little uh, jukebox and I'd sing along to the songs on the jukebox and it became a little bit of a thing and people used to like oh you know where's where's little Kev I was at the time and you know, I'd get up on stage people start giving me money and everything which is good and that was kind of my from a very very early age obviously getting into music and it's uh, it's just stayed with me ever since it's all I've ever wanted to do and I played my first show, my first gig, when I was around about the same age. I think I was like 13 years old, I played my first gig. And it was actually at my old junior school. Um, me and my, my two friends who were in a band together, we were a three-piece band. Uh, we were called uh, Sonic Flight. <laughs> Terrible name. Uh, but a wonderful band. And we, we used to play like Jimi Hendrix and Guns N' Roses and you know, Queen and, and all of these things. And we went back and we played their, uh, 
the junior school uh, Christmas party. So you had like these three long haired, you know, 13 year old guys turning up playing Guns N' Roses and <laughs> Jimi Hendrix to these kids who were, you know, seven or eight years old. <laughs> I don't think they really knew what was going on at the time, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and that was kind of my, from a very, very early age, obviously getting into music. Was, was probably the song that made me fall in love with them, you know. I heard Alive and I was like, wow. Um, and then my, my friend Lynn uh, loaned the album to me and I was listening through and I got to that song. And I, that song finished and I was just like, I, I felt like emotional. Yeah. And that was it, it was just, I was in love. <laughs> You know, it's getting bigger each year, um, so there's always a bit more to do each year. Uh, coordinating with people and making sure everybody's free at the same time. And I think um, I think if you're good enough and I think if it's uh, promoted enough, then yeah, it'll do well. It'll be a big show. I become a little bit obsessive about it as well, mm -hmm. so just to make sure everything's okay for, for everybody else then as well. Um, but yeah, I think time is, is the biggest thing it takes. But it's, it's worth it. It's not really about us or any other tribute band, it's about Pearl Jam themselves, you know, and, you know, doing it for a band that we, we genuinely love, you know, we're playing songs that we, we really, really love. There's obvious songs that you have to play, and then the rest is kind of things that people ask us to play or, or we think, you know, they want to hear. It's not just about the vocal as well, you know, it's about the kind of the movements and the expressions and, and things like that and, you know, for the first few shows or whatever, it was like, you know, I was quite conscious of, of what I was doing, thinking, okay, well, this is what he does at this point and then people afterwards are like, oh, you know, that's, it's so uncanny, you know, and I'm like, oh, okay, what, what did I do? <laughs> Yeah, there was a good friend of mine at the start. I, I didn't really understand what it was, and so he did a, a Smith's tribute and, and a few other things. And he kind of explained to me. He said, "Yeah, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of cynicism about tributes and things." And he said, "Once you realise, it's just it's kind of like it's like Shakespeare. It's like a play, you know. And you go out and you you try and connect to people." sort of interpreting these things, you know, and one side I was like, yeah, that, I, I can get on board with that, you know, so it's like, yeah, you're kind of yourself and you're doing all the things before the show and then I put the clothes on, the, the corduroy jacket comes out and the boots and the shorts and then you just kind of start thinking and then, it, yeah, it just, and it clicks and you're like, okay, and now I'm ready. <laughs> It's a really strange thing. It's like you you try to take on the the, the persona, if you like, of, of the the person you're trying to pay tribute to, um, and yeah, just just not not for nothing for anything strange, but just so you can really do it justice. You know, it's it's like because of the music and the, the you know the the way the songs are and and things like that. It's uh, it needs that to really get the message across. You yeah. know, you, I don't think you can get up and, and play their songs and and fake it, you know, so you you kind of have to try and get into that frame of mind yeah. each, each time you do it, just to try and make it that bit more genuine. Obviously the first time you, you try a new song, it's like, you know what you're trying to do, and, and even if you think you're kind of playing it right or you're performing it right, you kind of know when it's ready, you know, when you, you do it again and you do it again and you keep chipping away and then suddenly you play it and it feels like it's yours. You know, it's like, it's a different thing then. It's like you're not playing their song anymore. It feels like you're playing your own song, you know? Um, yeah, so it's, it's a strange thing, because you, it does like, you get to that point where you kind of do that for so long, and then you're like, okay, so who am I? <laughs> you know, it's like, the longer it's gone on, the, the, the more 
strangely the more normal it feels to, to, to try and be him you know so it, as I say it's less of an act now and it's more of just a thing that you, you are yeah. that you do um, but yeah it, it can get a little bit blurry <laughs> um, which is why when it's all done it's nice to just completely switch off and then just go out and, and live your life for six months at least and I might not have been aware of the right work ethic when it came to music. But like Kevin, there was one thing I always knew, even when I was a little boy. I genuinely liked being creative. Whether it was with drawing, painting, photography, or even building a tree fort with my brother. I was always ready just to create and play. And I believe that it was through this passion of creativity and the feeling of freedom to create that I was introduced to music. And it's the same reason that I began seriously exploring the areas of film and acting. I found my way into film, and Kevin has focused on music. But both of us have incorporated a transformation from a young age. And this transformation began with our passion for music and creativity. It also leads to a sort of transformation of who we are now, and how we both strive to be artists and performers. For Kevin, this is even more relevant as he must transform into a character each night he performs on stage. And you might think that it's a little strange that someone performs as someone else, but if you were me and witness what I have experienced, it would allow you to look back on your life and all of the creativity that was involved in it. Which is why this is a perfect moment for me to share what exactly is on my cassette. When I was 18 years old, I bought cassette tapes and I used my brother's four track recorder and set up some microphones. And I recorded the songs that I was, that was coming out of my head at the time. And I wanted to learn these songs and record these songs and share them with other people and, and hopefully create inspiration of other people to do the same thing. I hope that there is a song on here, my first song that I ever wrote, because this, this history that goes into what it took to record this tape and how long it's been since I recorded it. And I can't tell you the last time I actually listened to this. I really hope that I can share it with other people finally and to share with people what what I was what my dream was and um this this was my logo <laughs> that's how um important music was for me I, I created my own logos and and it's one of those things you know you put the effort into it and you want to share it with other people but no one has ever heard it and I'm hoping that the, the reason nobody has ever heard it is because it, the song was really bad. <laughs> or that uh, the tape broke. Because I don't really remember the reasoning behind not sharing it with other people.
There's no vocals. This cassette player is backwards. The fast forward is uh, it's actually reverse. <laughs> yeah, it's all backwards. It's really bad, I can tell though. I was not a vocal musician. to play the tape backwards um, on the reverse side. I'm gonna have to re record the uh, the vocals and then switch the vocals. That's just the way the tapes were back then. Um, it, I would have needed a, a legit four track player. Um, I think I could still do it and then eventually have the the song with the vocals. You know, they do say that you, you know dreams can never die. You can always you can always live your dream. You can always uh do exactly what you want and intend. But something led me in the direction of uh film and photography and and music was not a part of that. So the only thing about music now is is I enjoy other musicians. You know, when I wrote this song, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if people would actually like it. Um, and there probably would have been people that liked hearing this song. Um, 